kind of out of reach. And then I thought, well, you know, music seemed out of reach to a lot of people. And then punk rock was a very good lesson, only one of many, in, in the, the idea that it doesn't have to be out of reach. Mm -hmm. you know, just, just do it. Sometimes you do it smaller. Sometimes you do it with a, with a uh, wind-up camera or, a, you know, or an acoustic guitar. But so in that context, why, why is your, your work with Fugazi important, would you say? Well, Fugazi, those were, I went to high school with Ian, and so I was kind of, you know, with him in the moments when he kind of discovered the path that he was, that he's still following, and Could so you, I'm, Sorry, just to explain, because I'm not, not sure everybody here will know who they oh, are. Oh, yeah, so. yeah, I mean, Fugazi was a band, is, was a band from Washington, D.C. that, um, that, uh, I don't want to say pioneered, because there's always other examples, but they were very good about, about, um, being thoughtful about the way that they did their business and also being uh, very determined to stay independent in a genuine way. And, you know, they, they're known for a lot of things like only playing $5 shows and only playing benefits in their hometown of Washington, D.C. And, and uh, their, Ian was one of the people who started Discord Records, and so everything that they did was done through Discord and without um, external managers or agents or shenanigans. They always proved to me that punk rock works, basically, that, that you could be completely punk, do things completely independently, and make a living, and consequently yeah. provide a genuine alternative. And, and so you, you made a film about them called Instrument. Yeah, I worked with them for 10 years, and we did a piece called Instrument, and it's very much kind of... Well, it's really about music, you know, it's more, it's not, it's not so much a, a documentary where, we're, where, where they're making or anybody's making a big deal about, you know, DIY or anything else, but it's, it's evident in the way that it all unfolds. And, it, and uh, but I think that most importantly, you know, they, they were, they were operating that way, not, not because they wanted to just make a political point, but because they wanted to play whatever music they wanted to play and they wanted to be, to be able to play that like, you know, on a given night, there's never a set list, and it meant that that they had to kind of stay on their toes, and it meant that anybody in the band could take it in a new, in a different direction. And, and in a way, I feel like if I'm to be compared to something as a filmmaker, a lot, it's not the case with all of the work that I do, but in a lot of the work that I do, it's a little bit more like I'm an, imp uh, like, like I'm an imp improvising musician and I'm using the camera instead of a, a musical instrument, and you know, and the street is the is the venue, you know. So that's the way I sometimes think of it. That doesn't sound like a pain in the ass at all. Though, so it's no, expensive. it's very, it's it's great, but but it also, you know, sometimes it means I go stand around on the corner for six hours and I don't get anything, you know, and that's that's that's, that's and so it goes. And it also means, um, you know, not making a lot of money and and. Uh, Sometimes it's difficult for people to see the work, and there's a lot of kind of, you know, there are issues and problems and all of that. But I, 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 it's hard to go back. You know, it's hard to want to go and just like it would be at Fugazi. I mean, at, at, after doing it that way for years and years, like it would have been inconceivable for them to to give up that freedom. You know, and all the you know major labels came and came a calling and said, "What do you want?" And, they were like, you know, what we have. What we have, <laughs> yeah. So, um, sorry, oh, there's a question. There. Sorry, I was just wondering, um, Pizza film, um, was that shot in 16 as well? Yeah, it's all. Um, just because um, at the beginning um, it says, I think I'm right in saying it says a film slash video. Yeah. What, what, do, you, what do you mean by it? I meant that because this was a long time ago that these were made when people were still kind of hung up about the distinctions between film and video. So, for example, you know, there were film festivals and there were video festivals, mm -hmm. and now all of that has kind of disappeared for, for better and worse. But uh, I, don't, I wouldn't put that on it anymore. Now people make videos and they just say a film, you know, which is somewhat puzzling to me, but, you know, if you can get away with it, why not? Um, so. um, 
What are we about to see? Oh, okay. Well, there's one more question, and then I'll. Uh, I was going to ask if the next films are going to have little bits of fire in the middle, like the last two films. <laughs> Only uh, internal fire, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Speaking of fire, well, let, let's look at uh, the Patty Smith portrait. There's fire in there. I assume. I'm sure. <laughs> Patty's involved. There's some fire of some kind. Um, so yeah, this is a Patty Smith portrait shot in Super 8. It's called Long for the City. And then, um, then there's a couple more shorts and one medium, medium long. All right, so thank you for your patience and onward. Do you uh, cut the soundtrack to the visuals at all, or is that quite a random overlay? Because the, especially with the Italian films as well, yeah. you're you're going through. Oh no, it, it's all very carefully right. stuck there, <laughs> inch by inch, frame by frame pretty much. I mean, I will occasionally like lay something down and enjoy something that happens by accident or haphazardly, but no, the soundtracks are very carefully made. I just, I do, you know, try to, to kind of, um, you know, do things that feel unexpected to, in a way because I learn from them and I enjoy juxtapositions that are maybe curious but 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 it is I don't I I often cut silently for a while and then start putting down sounds and then you know go back and forth but I don't um, I it's it's very it's very it's done with care I think <laughs> I mean it, you know, like in the Blood Orange Sky one, I was working with um, Mark Linkus, who was in a band called Sparkle Horse, and it, particularly in his earlier records, and I really re love the kind of dirtiness of them, and there's a lot of kind of found elements, and I, you know, felt that that was something akin to what I was doing in film, and, and we worked on the soundtrack together, um, and then I edited things that we made very particularly to the picture, but I wanted, I, I didn't, I didn't want it to be uh, kind of uniform and I wanted it to, to feel in a way disjointed in the way that a, that a city feels disjointed, you know, where you get a little bit of music from a passing car and you get a, somebody yells something out and somebody, uh, you know, uh, opens their window and music is playing, so you, you have a kind of, uh, you know, th there are elements that are kind of falling out of the sky, and I, I like that. So I didn't want it to be kind of um, always comfortable, and maybe you're, you're sensing that. I mean, I really had fun in that soundtrack. Well, I, I, I love that aspect of it, because it just gives another shifting layer over yeah. the top. But I do find that, you know, with rare exceptions, if you think you're going to kind of create that by just sort of randomly putting things together, you might learn a lot from it, but it, it often just doesn't work. And, and so even though I talk about all of this kind of freedom and, you know, haphazard, go out and see what you catch, I, I, I'm really, I really, the edits are, are, are really intense and they're very kind of, complicated in their way, I, I, I hope, I, I think. I mean, every once in a while I get lucky, but, but no, usually it's quite a kind of uh, process and a, and a lot of um, little adjustments to make things, even, even to make things feel random. Do you edit by hand? You know, on the stage? No, I, I edit digitally <coughs> with the, an Avid or Final Cut Pro. I mean, I started out at editing by hand, but not anymore. You know, I have, I have Final Cut at home, and I like to be able to, you know, roll out of bed and have a thought and and, and play with it. Mm. 
And and do you, are you shooting with digital video now as well? Or are you still? I, I do on on occasion, um, but very rarely. I mean, I I. I, I'll end up there because that's where we're all, you know, that's where the forced march is going. But I don't really, I don't yet um, enjoy it as much for some reasons that are clear to me and some that are somewhat mysterious. But I'd, I'd rather make films than not make them. And if it means learning how to be more comfortable with digital tools, then, then that's what I'll have to become. And every once in a while, someone is now, you know, doing something.